Welcome to Open Studio with Man Make Machine. My name is Bundu Sitole, and today we are discussing the fourth industrial revolution, the revolution that is bound to change your life pretty soon. Today we'll be discussing the internet solutions which are pretty much needed for the fourth industrial revolution to work. And I have my two guests here that are an industry, which is Kunrad Lobsha um, from Man Make Machine and Sabrina Abba from Wish. And now we are going to watch a clip uh, from FTD Facts that will be explaining the internet and how it connects one nation to the next. What's happening guys, my name is Leroy. Welcome to another edition of FTD Facts. Now the question is, how many hours do you spend a day on the internet? Now if you're like me, you probably spend maybe 18 to 20 hours a day on the internet. Now you're probably wondering, how on earth could somebody spend that much time in front of a screen every single day? Well, it may not be as hard to believe after you understand exactly what the internet is. We use it every day to access our emails and various websites. You're using it right now to watch this video, unless you downloaded it to your computer or something and are watching it there, but in that case, you don't count. The internet is so integral to our society right now, but how does it work? What actually is the internet? Where is it? And why is it? In a nutshell, the internet is the biggest computer network in the entire world, connecting millions of computers and devices. Now a network is a group of two or more computer systems linked together. Now before we continue, for most people, when you mention the word internet, right away they're thinking the World Wide Web, and in many cases the words are used interchangeably, but the internet and the World Wide Web are not exactly the same thing. The internet is a physical network of computers around the world. The World Wide web however is a virtual network of websites connected by links these websites are stored on servers on the internet so the World Wide Web is a part of the internet they're not the same thing now let's break down the type of internet connections that make up the internet first we have the local area connection or you may see LAN for short now these are two or more computers that are connected now the keyword is local so these computers are connected but very close together also cover a very small small area, maybe like in an office space or in a house. Now the wide area network or WAN for short, it consists of two or more local area networks. Now these computers are further apart, they can be connected through multiple types of wires and the internet is the largest wide area network that exists. Now both LAN and WAN connections can be connected through wireless radio signals if you set up Wi-Fi connections, but we'll save the explanation of what Wi-Fi is and all that good stuff for another video. Okay, so we understand that multiple computers can be connected, cool. Also we see that the internet is a physical connection of any or all the computers that exist in the world and those connections can be made through cables or radio signals, but that still doesn't explain where all these pretty online web pages and videos come from. How are we able to see them? We have to take a look at the virtual network now the and how it relates to the internet. So let's start off by defining servers and clients. You'll understand how they relate a lot easier once we break down what servers and clients are. A server is pretty much a computer that serves various computers in a network by using specialized software and also they store information. So for example, the web pages, the YouTube videos, all the photos and stuff, those are stored on a server. Now when you access these pages on your computer, your computer is then acting as a client that requests information and how a client requests information is through a software, maybe a web browser, and it communicates with the servers to relay that information. In peer-to-peer -peer or P2P networks, however, your computer can act as the client and the server. You can find this with programs like uTorrent or Skype. When you have an internet connection, you can access other people's computers and files. You can send files, access the World Wide Web, which is the virtual connection of websites stored on the servers. And these websites use various languages such as HTML and JavaScript to look and function a certain way. Once the World Wide Web is accessed using your client, information is requested and sent to your screen. But still, where is the internet. It's anywhere two or more computers are connected. And mobile devices fall into the category of computers, by the way. So if you are connected through Wi-Fi or through your mobile service provider, and you're receiving those Twitter and Facebook alerts, in a sense are on the internet, you're using it. So you see, you spend a lot more hours on the internet 
than you might think. So I hope that answers your question on where the internet is, what is the internet, why is it, how is it. Thank you guys so much for watching FTD Facts. Don't forget to tune in each and every single week for more facts on any type of subject that you want. And let me know, what do you want to learn about next? And we'll do a video on it. Until next time, guys, I'm Leroy Kenton. Peace out. That was an awesome clip from FTD Facts about the internet and how it works. I'm ecstatic about it and it looks so crazy to me, but I know that Conrad and Sabrina here will be able to actually explain a bit more about it. They will be introducing themselves real quick and then we'll talk about a few devices after the break as well. Conrad, tell us more about yourself. Well, I know I don't have much time, so I'll have mm -hmm. to cut it short. Um, I discovered the internet playing in my dad's office. He was a lecturer at a university, yeah. University of Zulaland. And at first it was just email, but I could I I've, I quickly figured out all, all the all the documentation and things that I needed to understand it I could find on the internet itself, mm -hmm. so I could teach myself how it worked, and then fast forward a few years I found myself in a situation where I wanted the internet to learn about something and I was staying in a small flat in <coughs> Stellenbosch and I couldn't afford the internet, yeah. so I had to figure out a way to, to connect myself to the internet. All the university residences had internet, but uh, I wasn't in a residence, so mm -hmm. my rent at the time was 800 rand a month, and the cheapest internet connection I could get was 2,500 rand a month. Wow, okay. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk more <laughs> about that a bit um, after the break, but Sabrina, please introduce yourself. Um, I'm Sabrina Alba. I'm, I'm the coordinator for WISH, which is Wireless Internet Services and Hardware. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so, Conrad, you can talk a bit more and tell me what's happening. Well, um, yo, at with some the devices. Point in, yeah. In 2003, I saw Wi-Fi for the first time. Yeah. And because I knew how the internet had grown, I realized that how easy it would be to to create my own little internet, internet just using Wi-Fi. Okay, cool. Um, okay, guys, so we have to go to an ad break. Um, after the break, we'll discuss a bit more about the devices on the table here. They look awesome. I love them, but yeah, cool. So guys, you're chilling with Man Make Machine, the show that is pretty cool, and my name is Boon and you can talk to, talk to us at Man Make Machine and ask us more questions. So right now, I am going to ask my guests a few questions about internet solutions. Sabrina, tell me more about Wish. Um, we are just an, uh, a company that we're trying to make uh, internet services easier and affordable. So the main reason why I joined Wish is where I come from, it's a bit difficult for us to really get the internet where do you come services. from? I come from Malawi. Yeah, tell yes, us more. I'm from <laughs> Malawi. Yeah. So we have some areas whereby we don't have the uh, internet network. You have to actually find a right spot where your phone is going to get the, the network from you. Sometimes okay. others have to even climb up a tree. <laughs> so <laughs> it, 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 well, it's not easy. It hasn't been easy. That's the main reason why I joined Rich. So we could try and see how we help each other and then maybe get there and help connect the internet and make it make life easier for everyone oh, and awesome. affordable. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Awesome. Conrad, tell us more about um, yourself and Man Make Machine and what is Wi-Fi and what's the difference between Wi-Fi and LTE, for instance, and 4G and all of that? What is the open spectrum? Tell us, yeah. <laughs> wow, that, well, so <coughs> I think the, the most important thing is to realize that those are just names for the same thing. Okay. And that thing is communication. Yeah. It's just different ways for us to, to exchange information or to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. So we use apps to, to send messages to each other and those messages get translated into signals. And those signals are just like different forms of light. It's, it's, it's invisible light that we can't see. Our eyes are maybe too small to see, to see this light, mm -hmm. but um, these antennas on the table here can actually see it and translate it into the, the messages and the data that we use on our phones and our computers. Okay, that is awesome. Yeah, so that's the difference between LTE and, and Wi-Fi. What, 
Because now, so from what I understand is that there's something called open spectrum and then closed spectrum, if I may say. So if you could just explain to us what happened there, what, why is there open spectrum? And for instance, I can use my phone to, you know, um, personal hotspot people. So what's up with that? Okay, so if you're in a room with a lot of people <coughs> talking, you have to shout really loud to hear the person next to you. Yeah. And this is the same kind of problem with, with, uh, with all this, um, this telecommunications equipment, mm -hmm. is that when it's transmitting or receiving, it's like a person talking. Mm -hmm. But it's in a different range that we can't pick up. Um, so f in order for, for companies to be able to guarantee that the message will be heard, they need to reserve some, some space in, in the air for their message to get through. Mm -hmm. So I think you can think about it like a, a huge highway with lots of lanes in it. Okay. So some companies get pre-allocated lanes where only their messages are allowed to drive. Oh. But then there's some shared lanes where anybody can drive. Oh. So that's the okay. main difference between LTE and Wi-Fi. Uh, the like Wi-Fi equipment all share the, sh the shared lanes, the license exempt frequencies. Okay. And LTE, the, the mobile network operators need to pay a reserve price in order to reserve that mm. lane for themselves. And I imagine ICASA handles all of that, am yes. I right? Yes, ah, okay. so we have a regulatory authority who, who makes sure that I don't go and drive in a big company's lane and mm. interfere with their network and cause yes. uh, network and signal problems for their customers. Yeah. My next question was actually about that. So um, how will the Wi-Fi world, for instance, if I may say, affect the closed spectrum, the companies, the big companies that you're talking about, how will it affect them? How will it affect South Africa and the world? And how will it change the world, so especially Wi-Fi? Yeah, I think it, it might be easy to <laughs> think that Wi-Fi is going, is going to compete with them or put them out of business or make their lives more difficult. But I think the, the weird thing about life and the way things work is, in a way, the more we share, the more we all have. Doesn't seem to make sense, but everything that I've studied and that I've seen points to that that's really the way things work. So I think the fact that we have Wi-Fi actually gives these bigger companies a lot more, a, lo a much bigger market, mm -hmm. and it allows them to sell much greater capacity and to to uh, there's a bigger need for the infrastructure. Mm. Um, there might be some problems with their business models or, or, or the way that they they market it or the way they try to monetize it so that they can afford to continue installing better and newer hardware. But the, ultimately, I think it benefits everybody. Ah, awesome. So Sabrina, what do you think about what Conrad has said now? How do you think this Wi-Fi will change you know, Malawian lives in, in South Africa or anyone in, in Africa, actually? It will really, really change a lot. It would make a very big impact on everybody mm. and everything because it At least it's going to make our lives much easier, like I said, because yeah. at the end of the day, it's it's really hard to get the networks. And then mm. on top of that, we buy the like airtime at a higher mm. price just because probably it's just trying to take advantage of the fact that there's nothing around. So mm. you, do, you have to get it whether you like it or not. Yeah. So, yeah. So, okay. So, guys, um, my, 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 my biggest question now is what would you tell the kid in the township that you know is that that wants to join you know building a wi-fi community network for instance what what would you say to him and would it actually would he, would they be able to actually like build one from scratch without anybody's help or what kind of help do they need and also what's the difference between these two devices the match x and, and the unify okay well to answer your first question yeah well firstly i think <coughs> it's important to know why you want it like, do you just want, well, even, even if you just want Wi-Fi to, to watch videos online, um, there's, that's, a, that's a good enough reason. Mm -hmm. I, I think a, a better reason would be so you can learn and you can understand the world better and you can solve, solve bigger problems that can help more people have more comfortable lives, maybe, or more, more fulfilling lives. Mm -hmm. So... And, but I also think a very important thing to know is that it takes one person to, to, to grab an idea and to run with it and yeah. to, to make, make it happen, but there's, 
not one person that can do it all. You need a team around you mm. and you need to be able to work with even the people you think who are competing with you yeah. are actually the people who are probably best suited to help you if you can work together. Ah, that's true, that's true. Um, tell me more about these two devices again, the Unify and the MatchX, because I know that the, the MatchX is a device that's called LoRa and the Unify is the open spectrum device, right? An access point. Yes, so so they so they different communication networks that can that serve different needs. Okay. Some for example, if you have a chat application and you want to be able to send videos on it, you need to be able to send a lot of data through that. So Wi Fi and LTE is much more suited to that. But then there are other other applications as well, such as metering. Mm. Maybe an electricity meter just needs to send or receive one or two messages a day oh, to see how, ma how much units have you used or how much do you need to contribute to the electricity network because of what you have consumed mm -hmm. in order to sustain the network or to grow the network. Yeah. So that's where things like LoRa and Sigbox and uh, uh, narrow brand band IoT mm -hmm. comes in to, to solve those machine applications, so, mm. so it's like an internet for, for, for devices and machines. And machines, okay, awesome. So guys, um, that'll be a wrap, and now we'll be going to an ad break, and then after we come back, we'll talk a bit more about the week. And we're back, guys. So now we are going to talk about the utility week that happened last week. Tell us more, Conrad, what happened there? Why were there so many Chinese companies um, coming to show us their, um, what should I say, products and coming to sell it in as we could have been manufacturing these products within South Africa for ourselves? And for instance, a company like Man Make Machine does these solutions, but why, why do we also look for you know, these devices from China? Tell us more. Well, so... <coughs> I think we're in a very privileged p position that we have this convention center in Cape Town mm -hmm. because it gives us a little bit of exposure to two things. You know, if, if it wasn't for the convention center, mm -hmm. the only way that we would have been able to get access to, to some of the technology and some of the skills and, and understanding of these industries would be to, to spend a lot of money and a lot of time traveling the world and meeting with various people. And we have this convention center and almost every other week there's another huge I industry conference happening right here in Cape Town. Mm. And so uh, the, the convention is mostly, uh, is focused around solutions for all of Africa. So there were people from all over Africa there. And, but what it really drives home is how many different companies it takes to, to create just a simple solution. Mm. Uh, and I think if you if you really try to consider the scale, uh, utilities are, 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 are things like electricity, municipal in, um, electricity uh, companies mm -hmm. and telecommunications. Well, so Utility Week isn't even for telecommunications. Telecommunications companies have their own conference oh. and their conferences all over the world almost every other week. Mm -hmm. And but if you when you go to these you and you, you start talking to people there, you realize what kind of problems they deal with. And the biggest problem for a lot of them is how to deal with a huge number of devices or, or, or customers. Mm. The, the, I, would, I think the average mobile network has a few million customers. I mean, me personally, I have trouble maintaining relationships with with. 50 customers mm. and so how do you build an organization that can maintain relationships mm. with millions of customers wow. yeah okay that's cool um, so tell me more about what have you done for the communities especially in rural areas because I've heard what you've done there in Mankosi and Zitulele and then also what you're doing in Kailicha with VPUU and in Neti and Wakoma so tell me more about that well <coughs> so I kind of because there was a time in my life that I couldn't afford internet access, I, and because of the many ways in which it's helped me, mm -hmm. uh, I've learned almost everything I know by, by studying and watching videos and reading uh, documents and manuals on the internet. Mm -hmm. um, when I was a kid, I used to go to the bookstore and I couldn't afford the book, so I would stand in the bookstore and make notes and, and 
try to memorize things from the books. Mm -hmm. And the internet gives you access mm -hmm. to all of that for free from, from anywhere. So that was very exciting to me. And that's an opportunity that I think everybody sh should have access to. Mm -hmm. So, and the, the traditional business models seem to have a problem uh, in serving um, areas and communities that, that are, are not very well off or that do not primarily work with cash. So to go back to, to, to one of your earlier questions mm -hmm. about Utility Week, why are there so many Chinese manufacturers there? Um, I was lucky in that I got, we became good friends with a, 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 a Taiwanese um, person last, uh, over the last few years here in Cape Town. And she invited us to her wedding. Mm -hmm. So we could go to Taiwan to go to a wedding. And visiting the East was amazing. You yeah. know, everywhere you go, there's about 10 to 100 times as many people as anywhere you go in, in South Africa. Yeah, so it's, it's so like, that's where you kind of get these kind of devices, which is what I'd well actually like to explain a bit more, especially the Totoya and what that is, that device is. So <laughs> I, I, the, the thing about the East is there are so many more people mm. and the economies are so much more developed than ours it's much easier for a company with the same amount of effort that you would have had to spend here yeah. to, to just do something small with that same amount of effort. If you were based in, in China or in, mm -hmm. in India, you would have a much greater impact and there would be a much bigger market and a lot more potential customers mm -hmm. or people contributing or buying your services. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so when it comes to ISPs or internet service providers, there's so many of them in South Africa. How do you choose between them? How do you find the best one? There's, I know there's something called WAPA as well. So you can tell me more, just a bit more about that. And I know Sabrina knows about WAPA, but let's hear from you, Conrad, because you yeah. know quite uh, a bit so, more. Well, so I realized that you, know, you don't have to have a degree in order to build a network. It's just a, a, a network is just devices connected mm -hmm. to each other with wires. <laughs> and it's pretty easy to, <coughs> to, to connect all the devices together What's difficult is to monitor the devices or to, to understand how to configure them. Mm -hmm. so, um, so I was also very lucky to be invited by a rural community to come and help them to improve their network. And yeah. I, s I learned firsthand how, how possible it is for mm -hmm. even an I I illiterate people to build a network mm -hmm. and that gives them access to if it's a really good network, there's mm -hmm. no reason why it shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. They can even watch videos and learn how to read and write from videos yeah, just from really having the internet. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So Sabrina, I know that you've helped us a lot you know, building networks. So what was your um, experience with it all? Was it, did you find it cool? Or very nice, very <laughs> cool actually, very exciting. And uh -huh. yeah, we're looking forward to do more. Okay, cool. Yeah, so um, guys, how do we get a hold of you? <coughs> Facebook? Oh, you can search for me on the internet or if you Kunrad search Loksha, for... Yes. Right? Yeah. And Sabrina? You can search for me on Facebook or email. Awesome, Sabrina. Thank um, guys, thank you so much for coming to the show. And I appreciate your time. I appreciate that you are very busy as well and <coughs> you still came over. So thanks a lot. And guys, that will be a wrap. Uh, next time we'll be discussing some other cooler things when it comes to internet and how do you source devices from China. Thanks.